So, uh, interesting fact, Citrine is actually the world's first AI for materials company founded all the way back in 2013. And here we have Greg Mulholland, the CEO of Citrine. Thanks for joining us. Can you hear us, Greg? I can. Can you hear me? Well, thank you very much for having me. And, and it's a pleasure to uh, be able to take part in this incredible forum. Uh, as as uh, Javier mentioned, my, uh, my background is uh, in AI for materials, and I'm proud to have been the founder of the first AI for materials company. Um, and so I want to give a little bit of a history of the field, because I think there's a lot of interesting things going on in this space. As was mentioned, um, Citrine started in 2013. And 2013 uh, was, was an infinity ago in AI. I'm sure your discussions today have included um, many things about modern AI technologies, but at that time, uh, things were very different. It was, it was the first, maybe first or second AI wave, and we are maybe in the fourth or fifth AI wave now. And for the first five years of the company's history, we basically operated as a consulting firm. Most materials and chemicals companies really didn't know what to make of AI. And at that time, we really needed to bring people alongside software. And so uh, for that period, we, we were a software, uh, or a software second company, a, a primarily consulting firm. Um, and we started to move from our earliest days in alloy development and hard materials, ceramics, batteries, these sorts of things, into organic materials and formulation, which is the largest part of our business today. We then entered our uh, second phase of the company, um, and that's the phase we're in today. Uh, we are primarily a software company today. We support our software with professional services. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, we sell software first. And so in 2019, we launched our first real software product that a company could buy and use without uh, having used Citrine before and without our consulting services. Uh, and then in 2021 and 2022, we started to broaden much more. We now have exciting businesses in CPG, food, compounded plastics, paints, coatings, uh, sustainability broadly. Um, we've seen a lot of success in using AI for materials. And of course now in 2023, we have uh, large language models, these generative models and foundation models, uh, transformers, more advanced liquid neural nets, and many, many other technology areas. At the same time, Citrine is growing its footprint beyond North America. Uh, we work very closely with folks in Europe um, and have grown our business now South America and are expanding into Asia through partly through 2023 and then through 2024 as well. So I wanted to share a few lessons that we've learned uh, in this journey of, of 11 years now, um, really helping to define the future of AI in the materials segment. The first lesson that I want to highlight is lessons about uh, what we've learned as a startup. Um, if you want to start a company in AI for materials, um, you must know that technology is not enough. Technology is important, but technology is not transformation. Technology is a tool. And so building technology to make sure that it's useful uh, in a way that customers can use these things is very important. The second thing is materials companies' incentives aren't always what you think they are. They are very often, uh, they are very often economically driven. They're not necessarily driven by materials performance. They're driven by macro effects and supply chains, regulation and consumer preference. And so efficiency is critical. And finally, Timing is of the essence. I sometimes tell people that we're an overnight success 10 years later simply because for the first five years of our history, most of the industry thought we were crazy. Uh, well, I'm proud that they don't anymore, uh, but it was a very, uh, it required that we survive for 11 years to become truly successful. We've, all, we've also really learned a lot about how industry views these tools. This is my advice to any materials company or company that relies on materials that they should really consider in how they move forward with AI. The first 
is that most materials companies, most chemicals companies, most CPG companies do not, are not software companies and should really not build software in house. We've seen lots of companies spend millions and millions of dollars trying to build an internal citrine only to realize that that is very hard to do. The second thing is don't try to get all of the data. The data is rare, the data is difficult, um, and, and you really wanna start with high value data rather than going after everything. And the third rule is empower your whole team. Do not rely on four or five or 10 data scientists but really put the tools in the hands of every chemical engineer, material scientist, and other technical expert um, such that they can gain maximum benefit. It's how you spread out the skills across your organization. So with that in mind, we also learned really important lessons about how uh, AI should be adopted and built in this industry. Because as I'm sure you know, we do not have infinite data. So the way we thought about it was by asking the question, how do we teach people to be experts in our industry, in our field? This is sort of a very North American focus, but it's relatively similar. When you teach someone from the beginning, you teach them a basic chemist knowledge of chemistry. You teach them rules of thumb. Before they ever touch the lab, you explain what's happening. Then you teach them theory, and then they learn from data when they get their PhD. And of course, the people at your companies uh, are now trying to deliver commercially relevant products, but they do that using this entire stack of knowledge that they've had from their entire careers. In our view, in my view at Citrine, the way we get around the small data problem, the fact that data is rare and expensive in materials, is by copying this approach and bringing it into the materials industry. So instead of learning everything from data, like many fields are doing, um, we bring in basic knowledge into the model before it ever understands data. We build in those rules of thumb and basic technical knowledge and allow your scientists to do the same. We're able to connect with theory and simulation tools like molecular dynamics, density functional theory, and other simulation techniques that understand the theory to make sure the AI learns physics theory. And then, and only then, once we have all of that work, we can layer data into AI to identify subtle relationships in the data and exploit those relationships to get to new innovative solutions. And then of course, your expertise as a materials or chemicals company or company that relies on materials and chemicals with differentiated capabilities. You use your understanding of your market to, plus the AI to figure out how do I make the right material at the right moment. And so the results we see are, are pretty amazing. And I'm really glad that this conversation is happening in so many places, uh, including broader Asia, where so many materials companies are having such a big impact. We see five to 10 X faster product development. We see rationalized product, portfolio, product portfolios. We see better de-risking of new products and actually cost out and optimization for sustainability. We see an 80% reduction in time responding to customers. And we're learning constantly because of this approach of integrating knowledge from the beginning. We're able to learn constantly and capture the knowledge of those critical people within our, our companies such that when they retire or when they leave, uh, that knowledge stays with the company uh, and is able to be used in the future as part of these AI models. And so uh, that is my official content for now. Uh, thank you very much for your time and I'm happy to answer questions with my remaining few minutes uh, if it's of interest. Testing, okay. Um, so uh, Greg's open to questions from the floor. Anyone has questions? Uh, Greg, there's a FAQ. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I will start with the first question, <laughs> Greg. Thank you for making the presentation all the way from Silicon Valley. I think a lot of uh, people wonder about platform versus product. I know Citron went from product to platform and uh, now it's a very platform company. So I wonder if you could comment on your journey between product company and platform company and what's the pro and con of each business model. Yeah, of course. So the the platform approach uh, is really informed by this idea that no chemicals or materials company has uh, completely distinct products. If you have a 1,000 products in your product portfolio, that does not mean that you have uh, 1,000 disconnected chemistries. That would be a crazy business to be in. And so... Um, it is our view that product and platform and software are very similar. We, we, when we sell, uh, it is our goal to operate in a platform mentality. But all that really means is that when you have 20 AI projects going on in materials development, each one of those can inform one another. Um, what we do not do is share data with other companies. So everybody gets their own platform. That is entirely safe. And the, uh, the, the platform effects only work on the behalf of the company that's using us. So uh, in, in, you know, if, if you're a chemicals company, uh, the idea would be that you're gaining capabilities across your organization. A good example is I was working with a company that uh, makes both adhesives and lubricants. And I once said to their CTO, what is an, what is an adhesive? but just a really bad lubricant. And while that's kind of true, um, the important thing is that both are surface energy optimizations. And so the chemistry is very, very well related. And they were able to learn across those two different domains about new chemistries they might use. And so uh, to the question, our, uh, our platform approach allows a much broader impact of AI across a materials company than a single uh, application delivery might have. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, any other questions from the floor? Uh, um, Greg Mahal and Citrine. No? Anyone? Well, I guess uh, that's uh, all the questions we have for you. Uh, Greg, thank you for dialing in all the way from the States. Really appreciate your time, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. It was an honor to be here. I appreciate it very much. Have a wonderful conference. Thank you.